Hey tribe, today we looked at the first societies that developed after leaving Africa. Let's dive in. After modern humans evolved in Africa, the earliest major migration was into the Middle East and South Asia, which is now India, followed by dispersals into East Asia, like China and beyond. Genetic evidence shows that South Asia became a key crossroads of admixture, while East Asia developed distinct lineages later. So yes, Africa first, then South Asia, then East Asia, with many subpopulations forming along the way. Homo sapiens originated in Africa about 300,000 years ago. The first major dispersal of modern humans occurred around 50,000 to 70,000 years ago, moving into the Middle East and then further east. Earlier hominins, like Homo erectus, had already left Africa about 2 million years ago, but they were not direct ancestors of all modern humans. Neanderthal early ape descendants only. India was one of the earliest destinations for humans leaving Africa. Genetic studies show deep diversity, admixture from Neanderthals and Denisovans, who were archaic humans, Iranian farmers during Neolithic migrations, Central Asian steppe pastoralists in the Bronze Age, and indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers. With more than 5,000 ethno-linguistic groups, India today is one of the most genetically diverse regions in the world. So, after settling in South Asia, populations moved further east into China and Southeast Asia. Genetic evidence shows that East Asians carry distinct lineages, and actually, they have less diversity compared to South Asia. This suggests there were some later bottlenecks along the way. Now, some Chinese scientists have even proposed alternative theories like East Asia being a cradle of humanity but the mainstream consensus still points to the route from Africa to South Asia and then to East Asia. The Middle East was kind of the first staging ground after Africa, and it became a mixing zone with Neanderthals. In South Asia, there were ancient hunter-gatherers, plus later admixture from places like Iran and Central Asia. East Asia, on the other hand, went through distinct genetic bottlenecks, which led to populations that are relatively homogeneous compared to India. When it comes to Southeast Asia and Oceania, early migrants actually carried Denisovan DNA, especially in Melanesia, and in Europe populations arrived a bit later, mixing heavily with Neanderthals. The genetic sequence of dispersal goes like this. Africa to the ancient Middle East, then to South Asia, like India, and finally to East Asia, including China and Southeast Asia. South Asia was the first major hub of genetic diversity outside Africa, while East Asia developed distinct but, um, less diverse lineages later on. So, um, would you like me to map this migration visually into a timeline chart that shows the genetic subpopulations like moving from Africa to India and then to China? Well, the genetic migration sequence goes like this. Africa first, then the ancient Middle East, then South Asia, which is basically India, then East Asia, like China and even beyond that, and finally Oceania. South Asia was actually the earliest major hub outside of Africa, while East Asia developed its own, you know, distinct lineages a bit later. Okay, so here's a simplified timeline of how populations spread, just to make it a bit easier to follow. Time, years ago, about 300,000 in Africa. That's when Homo sapiens evolves in Africa. So, um, around 70,000 to 50,000 years ago, humans first started moving out of Africa into the Middle East. During this time, there was like some mixing with Neanderthals. And, you know, a new population began to spread towards South Asia, like India. If we look at the genetic profiles from this time, we see a mix of African, African albino, Neanderthal, who were kinda like ape men, and Denisovan, 
who were sort of ape-human hybrids. Then, about 50,000 to 45,000 years ago, South Asia, or India, became a major hub of genetic diversity. There was a lot of mixing going on between African indigenous hunter-gatherers, people of African descent who were Iranian farmers, and later, groups from Central Asia who came from the steppe. The core genetics in this region kept evolving, but, um, they were still of African descent, and you could see a wider spectrum of black and brown skin tones. Moving forward to around 45,000 to 40,000 years ago, people made their way into East Asia, like China and Southeast Asia. There were some pretty distinct genetic bottlenecks, and especially in Southeast Asia, there was more Denisovan admixture. So, yeah, that's how human genetics kept changing as people spread across the world. So, around 40,000 to 35,000 years ago in Oceania, people living there had a really high amount of Denisovan DNA, especially in Melanesians. That's kind of wild to think about. Then, about 40,000 to 30,000 years ago in Europe, Cro-Magnons showed up. There was a lot of mixing with Neanderthals, which means heavy Neanderthal admixture happened back then. The Middle East was actually the first big staging ground where humans met and even interbred with Neanderthals. In India or South Asia, it became a crossroads for genetic diversity with really deep lineages and later on, admixture from places like Iran and Central Asia. Over in China and East Asia, people developed their own distinct lineages, but these were less diverse because of population bottlenecks. In Southeast Asia and Oceania, there's a strong Denisovan genetic signal, especially in Melanesia. And in Europe, the later arrivals mixed with Neanderthals and formed some pretty unique Paleolithic cultures. So, the sequence goes like this. Africa to India to China to Oceania and Europe, with India showing up as the earliest major hub of genetic diversity outside of Africa. East Asia came next, but uh, with a bit narrower genetic variation because of bottlenecks along the way. If you'd like, I can totally create a visual timeline chart showing all these migrations and admixture events. Africa at the root, branching out into India, China, Oceania, and Europe. Would you like me to plot that out so you can see the flow more clearly? Okay, so, part three, the Great Dispersal Eastward. From the cradle of Africa, humanity crossed into South Asia. India became the first great crossroads, where hunter-gatherers, Iranian farmers, and steppe pastoralists all layered their lineages into, like, one of the most diverse genetic tapestries on Earth. From India, waves of migration kept pressing further east. When people moved into China, they carried fragments of that diversity, but bottlenecks narrowed the genetic stream. Distinct East Asian lineages emerged, not as varied as India, but still deeply rooted in their own continuity. South Asia stayed the hub, East Asia became the branch, and from these two, humanity spiraled outward, into Southeast Asia, Oceania, and eventually Europe. Africa was the origin, India was the crossroads, China was the branch, and together they form the living map of our shared genetic journey. From Africa, India, China, and beyond, thanks for watching.